If you ever thought about getting a successful mentor or coach and you actually want me, Spectacular Smith, to actually coach you and become your mentor, I'm actually so excited about releasing my online school, Spectacular Academy, where I'm actually going to teach you live once a month different skill sets that's actually going to help you change your life for the better transformational information that I'm going to give you guys access to. I have a formula to success that every single company that I ever touched turned into gold. And I have over 14 companies. Okay. And all of them have the same type of success. So I want to teach you everything that the school system should have taught you. You know, everything that I know and how I built these fast growing companies and these award winning companies and show you real curriculums that I'm going to break down. You're going to have access to me. I'm going to be live in the chat rooms. I'm going to be live in the Facebook groups and personal communities that I'm going to give you guys access to of like minded entrepreneurs. So you're not by yourself on this mission. Not only you have me as a coach and a mentor, but you actually have your peer to peer people that's going to push you and root for you on the way to the top. Guys that's on the same exact weight limp that you are on and want the same exact results because my game plan is to change the way the school systems teach and teach you the things that need to make an impact in your life. Things that's going to be a high ticket skill that you can use forever where you don't never have to worry about going broke or not eating at night because once you learn how to market and brand yourself then you can eat for a lifetime you get access to my team and everything if you want to go to my free training just to get a sample of the things that's going to be in my program you can actually go to specmentorme.com or i'm gonna put it in the bio only take a certain amount of people every single month so reserve your seat and do not procrastinate because you might just miss out. Now let's get to the podcast. What's up, everybody? This is Spectacular Smith and welcome to the Spectacular Experience. Spec, what's up, man? What's up, brother? How you doing? I'm doing great, man. First and foremost, thanks for taking the time out today to even, um, you know, speak with me. I know you got, you know, a busy schedule. You look like you're on the run right now, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're on the you're move, up, on the man. move. I appreciate it. Um, so I know, you know, you you not not only, you know, have you been a staple in the music world, um, the more I actually did research on you, the more I realized, like, this is a this is a great dude. Like I actually was looking up some social media stuff, um, some entrepreneur tips, and you came up multiple times. And I was like, wait, what does this dude do now? Like, how is he how is he operating? And the more I looked into your stuff, I looked at your interview, I was like, wow, this dude is, mm -hmm. is truly amazing. Um Thank you. So Thank you. How did you how did you end up getting into um, you know, the the social media stuff from from music? Like that's two totally different <laughs> different things like how did you end up getting into um you know the business of social media yeah man for me it was always a thing for me to have business under my belt mm -hmm. ever since i was a kid in third grade selling ten thousand dollars worth of candy and mm -hmm. al always since that since that day like always been an entrepreneur at heart i used to see my mom say, selling avon crystals doing a hustle thing my dad got out of prison you know from prison he went straight to buy a store and lived in his store in the back of the store until you know he ended up buying a daycare and then he ended up starting his record label and then it just started growing from there so i always had a great example to go by and you know just seeing the way they moved and the way they they was as individuals mm -hmm. and help me expand my mind and my brand on the possibilities just because I seen what they did. And my mom was a single mom with four kids. So wow. we didn't really have much at the time. And mm -hmm. she had to hustle hard for everything she had. But I just seen her work ethic and, and the way that she did things. And I think that helped me out um, subconsciously and just really, just really seeing the way that she was. It just, you know, motivated me. Yeah, definitely, man. Definitely. Um, and I know like when you started the social media game, like people didn't, you say people didn't really take you as serious because it was like, oh, it's, nah. 
the singer, you know? So how did yeah. you, how did you get people to actually like take you more serious in the social media game? Man, uh, it wasn't really, I mean, I didn't really do much, but just, just not letting anything bother me, you know, mm -hmm. not letting my nose turn, turn me away from my goals and my missions and my dreams. So every no, I just took that as motivation for me to take one step further. And a lot mm -hmm. of times people take those no's and they curl up in their bed and cry at night, you know, mm -hmm. and for me, it was spinach to Popeye. It's like, it just made me mm -hmm. stronger. I, I didn't mind. I was just like, all right, cool. You know, it's like right now I talk about my school and I post certain comments or something like that. And people will laugh like, oh, yeah, it was funny. OK, all right, watch <laughs> this. Watch this. All right, catch me. Catch me in two to three years from now. I might even right. escalate that to 365 days because, mm -hmm. you know, people laugh at the beginning, man. They start laughing at you and then they turn into believers and then they get mad because it's a waiting list. So mm, at, the, wow. at, the end of the, at the end of the day, like laugh, not cry later. You know, mm -hmm. cry later. So I know the traditional school systems are is tampered with and and you know made in a way where it make blacks look a certain type of way and the things that they're teaching blacks um, and from segmenting schools and making sure that only the people in wealthy neighborhoods can go to the best schools and the people that's in the and the projects only can make it to certain schools based on area codes and and sectioning everything off and. Black people can't get certain credit cards because they discriminate based on zip codes. Like it's certain things that that happens to people, and for us not to support each other is crazy, you know. And I was talking mm -hmm. about the whole Princeton thing, Princeton University, how they took down a racist name that was involved with the school, and I was just like, man, I put my name on my business, my my online business school, and I put the greater sign. I was like, yo, this this is where this where you should be learning some mm -hmm. real information. People could talk about Princeton and all that. All right, cool. No, Michelle Obama went to Princeton. All right, cool. You know, but watch what names you say come from my school within the next three to five years. So laugh now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Word. No, but, that's that's good. I mean, I, I yeah. think that's definitely a good, a good model to live by. You know, the laugh now, you know, wait in line. You say wait in line. I was trying to hurry up and get that quote down. That was a good quote. You said mm -hmm. laugh now, stand in line later or something like that, right? That's what you said? I don't know what I said. You said I'm going to rewind this. So I can, so I can yeah. Imagine. No, because so I also saw you You did the love project, man. I was huge. Like, um, mm -hmm. you know, that, that really spoke to me. You know, I've, I've had family um, incarcerated before. So, like, knowing that you, you know, raised money to help bail out uh, black fathers, um, mm -hmm. you know, that's that, that's huge. Like, how, where, where did you, like, get the inspiration for that from? Yeah, man. So I, I founded a group called the Power Circle, which is mm -hmm. all black, intelligent um, leaders, and we put everybody in the group, females, males, and all the black kings and queens, we come together to help help each other, you know, resources mm -hmm. to things that make an impact in their life and just sharing game with each other. And I put everybody in one group and we start, it start growing organically. And one mm -hmm. of the members in the group, uh, Mr. Two Week, two, two Week Workout, always, I don't know if it's Two Week Out or Two Week Workout, whichever one mm -hmm. it is, I always <laughs> butcher his name. Mm -hmm. But he messaged me saying that, you know, this 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 organization was bailing, it was helping bail out fathers. And we, we basically are an organization that when we see something that has an issue, we're literally the Batman of the black community. Mm -hmm. And we literally see something that's wrong or something that can have guidance or needed help. And we come together as a community to give back to the community. So wow. we we instantly, from the very first conversation we had with the organization, three of the members stepped up. One of them, him 500, donated $5,000 on the spot. Wow. Um, uh, we have Justin Owens, he donated 1,000 on the spot. 19 Keys donated $1,000 on the spot. Mm. And then I came in and it's like, all right, I can donate my money and my time right now, but I would rather amplify this message to the world. So how can I do that? So that's why I stepped in on a marketing tip and donating $10,000 worth of my time and my energy and, and everything that I have going on to amplify the message to the people. So more people can get involved, more people can help out. And we get people who have those those petty crimes, those misdemeanors are protesting and, and in jail for six, seven months and not able to get out. 
on a mm -hmm. bond because it's only three hundred dollars, four hundred dollars, but they so poor or broke they can't even get out. So now they uh. stuck in jail for seven months. You know, because they had a petty crime. And, and one of the things I love so much about that organization, the Love Project, is it's a system that once you get out, and they not only they bail you out, they come get you from jail, they give you a care package, and they send you home. But after that, it's what happens after that is what counts. They take you through another program called the Next Level, the, the Next Level Academy, where they mm. have mentorship. Somebody okay. that can, they can call on and guide them so they don't end up back in that situation. Wow. And then I give them access to my online business school so they can learn the required skill set to be able to make money in their sleep or not going out and stealing to make money. And I'll teach you how to make money. Mm. I can literally teach you how to fish and you can fish for a lifetime. You can eat for a lifetime and not only you can eat for a lifetime, but not only that, but you can pass the fishing pole down to whoever else you want to pass it down to. So now they can fish and eat for a lifetime and then stay right. within the community. And that's really mm. my goal. So anything that needs support, anything mm. that I can help out with in my, and, and I wouldn't even say my organization, what the power circle organization can help out with. We're down to come in and do as much as we can for the community. Cause I feel like all of our greats of our time right now that tied up doing other things. So I want to step up as much as I can as a voice, as a leader to the community, to be able to execute on, on my vision, on the people's vision and, and help where it needs help. Wow. Wow. And that's, that's amazing. I definitely, um, you know, commend you for doing that and, and stepping up and, and being, you know, that pillar in the community. Um, but you did, you all did the, the pretty, pretty Ricky did come back and I was, I was ecstatic. I, I listen to y'all stuff. I, I'm a DJ. So, you know, whenever I could drop some pretty Ricky is, is, is on and people already know what it is. So how did y'all like get back together for body? Cause y'all had been separated for a minute and then y'all came back for body. So like, how, how did that come about? Well, it came back, it came back around just, just being older and knowing that in our music career we never really got a wet nickel for our whole music career my father handled all the money made some bad investments bad business decisions and we left with nothing so mm -hmm. this was our time you know to come back because when we went through that breakup it was because of money financials and mm -hmm. my father not handling it correctly and we went through a, a battle with the with the record label, a legal battle, and we fell off the planet Earth. They locked us off of, out of all our social medias. Wow! Like they they just tried to take us out the game, and now coming back around after switching a couple members and everything, we we came back together. Like you know what? We never really got our just due for all the hard work yeah. we put in. And to our generation, you know, we're legends, but our bank account didn't say that based on the music business mm. so we wanted to take advantage of our legacy and come back and not only give the fans what they've been asking for and what they've been craving but still be able to give us what what we should be appreciated from what we should be able to to reap the benefits off of our past success because we never made money off of it so now this mm. is our way of saying hey listen we didn't fall off because people didn't rock with us no more. We didn't fall mm -hmm. off because our music was trash. We fell off on technical and technicalities, technical label issues and everything. So we was like, you know what? Let's get the fans what they asking for. Let's come back mm -hmm. together. We like, like let's amend our, our differences as brothers and family fight all the time. And we came back and we said, you know what? Let's get to the money and not only get to the money, but let's get back to our fans. Definitely, definitely. And that, that song is hot. That's song, I definitely put Thank it in you. my mix. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to send you the mix. I don't know if you're going to listen to it or not, but I'm going to definitely send it to you. I've I made sure I blended it in with all of the old stuff, too. And I think even now, like, you, y'all are at the point where people are even sampling y'all stuff. Like, I think yeah. that's, like, that's a big deal. Like, how does that feel to know, like, people are now, like, you know how it feels? It, oh, like, I remember that song. Like, how does it feel to hear, like, now people are, like, sampling the songs and, you know, getting it out there more? Like, what, what, what goes to your mind when you hear stuff like that? For me, it make me feel a little old at some time. At some time. Like, well, hold up, I ain't that old now. You're not old yet, bro. You still, you still good. You know, so so for me, it's it's a shock factor just to be able to see that and like, okay, you know. But for me, it's it's how you do everything. Like, it's, it's not what you do; it's how you do it. And uh, even with situations with me and you breaking up a little bit, brother. I don't know if it's, you might put your hand over the microphone or something. I, I can't, uh, I can't I hear you. Headphones, then I got all bars, so I don't know. Okay, no, nah, no, nah, you good now. You just, okay. I don't know if it's the, okay. 
yeah so so pretty much for me it's just like it's a it's it's a it's, a, it's a how you do things so i mm-hmm. just wanted you know when things does happen like that then they go through the right channels on on the respect level because even even we did he sweat a song over the lsg body record right what we talk about now and we call Keith sweat and we asked permission we asked permission mm-hmm. and, and we we took the proper channels to make sure that we did the right thing because this is this is people craft you can't just mm-hmm. go and like take somebody hit record and make it a remix or or, or mixtape record like that's disrespectful so just got to make sure you do it the right way if you are going to yeah, nah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, so like, what what advice could you give somebody? Oh, they say they can't hear me. Yeah, now 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 they can. That's all I was saying. The audio was a little distorted, but it's it's better oh. now. Like right okay. now, it's better. All right, perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me let me do this. Let me do this. Phone. Is this better? That's that's a hundred percent clear. A hundred percent clear. So much for them headphones. All right, cool. <laughs> you got the AirPods. Yo, the AirPods are a little a little clean. Nah, what what happened? I'm, I done lost two AirPods already, so oh, now yeah. I just I just got a new phone and I got what came with the phone, but I I'm just tired of buying them. I'm just tired of buying. Them. They just disappear. They just disappear. Yeah. I don't know, but yeah. Yeah, nah. So I mean, that's 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 great, man. Um, so like I know the Millennial Tour happened, and that was one of the biggest tours like ever for real. That that was huge. Like um, like what 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 was the feeling of getting back on stage? I know it it had been a minute, right? Like before you had been on like stage and in, in, in front of that kind of space like how did that feel to you know get back on stage with, with your with your brothers and and really perform it's electrifying i'm not gonna lie it's mm-hmm. electrifying and and being able to still sell out arenas after a decade in the business and going on a hiatus and coming back to be able to be in front of so lot crowds and get the love that we're getting just let us know that we got so much more work to do and mm-hmm. that we're letting our fans down by not putting out more music. So we mm-hmm. see that, and now we just we just putting our best foot forward, you know, mm-hmm. putting our differences to the side and doing everything that we need to do to deliver that those classic music. We got another song called Panties Off coming out. So oh, yeah, you're gonna you yeah. you can pretty much see what that's about. But yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, oh, bro, that's lit. That's love. That's love. Um. So the, the last question I just want to ask you was, what is some advice that you can give like a young entrepreneur that is looking to get into the creative social media side and the creative uh, entrepreneur uh, side right now? It's to go for it. Go for it. Don't let nobody talk you out of your dreams. So many people put barricades in front of you and make you live out their fears. Mm-hmm. So you got to be willing to take your best foot forward, invest in yourself, take a leap of faith in yourself. And no matter what you do, stay focused on what your main goal is. Mm-hmm. The guy who invented the light bulb, it took him 10,000 times to invent that light bulb. Wow. Now imagine if he would have gave up on the 9,999th time and say, man, this is not possible. So when you going through your mission and you going through your journey and obstacles come, you mm-hmm. got to understand that that's a part of the mission. That's a part of your your your, your story. Mm-hmm. You got to be willing to take those bumps and bruises with a smile and come back harder. So many people mm-hmm. like take the bumps and bruises and get one smack in the face and they sit down crying. You know, mm-hmm. pointing fingers at why they just got smacked. But life mm-hmm. gonna smack you a bunch of times. It's about how you react to what happens to you. It's mm-hmm. the thing that makes you great. All the greats was about to go bankrupt multiple times. Jeff Bezos, I love to talk about this story because Jeff Bezos almost went bankrupt three times. Wow. Three times. And now he's almost a trillionaire if he's not a trillionaire already. Mm -hmm. That's one of my favorite things to tell people because you might be at your last right now. You might feel like, man, it's over for me. But it's never over for you. Mm. Think of the last time you was dead broke or you feel like you was in an emergency situation and you just had to get some money or you just had to have something happen for you not to potentially drown. Mm -hmm. And you always made it out alive. It just made you stronger. Mm. So I like to tell those beginner entrepreneurs that you need to make sure you let nobody stop you from your dreams, from your missions. Surround yourself around the right people that's going to motivate you. Surround yourself around people who are going to make you see the full potential in yourself mm-hmm. and invest in yourself. You can never make the wrong investment in yourself. Podcasts, right. 
you know, IG live interviews, YouTube, Google, like you can literally find whatever information you're looking for. But then also understanding that it is another level. It's going to be a point in time where you're going to have to pay for information. So don't mm-hmm. be scared to pay for information to invest in yourself. Mm-hmm. Figure out if this is something that works well for you. And if your gut feeling is telling you that this is correct and this is something I need to do, then take a leap of faith in yourself. Because mm-hmm. all the gut feeling is, is basically past experience and logic coming together, right? Mm-hmm. And emotions all coming together that gives you that answer to go and it's calculating it for you so listen to your gut feeling also and you know take a leap of faith on yourself always wow man that was deep dude that was deep man um but i know i, I know you, you you say you didn't really have much time right do you, do you now have we can go like, for a few more minutes okay good good perfect because i i didn't know if you you had to um so another question i wanted to ask you like were you always like a sexual person before pretty ricky or is that just something that, like, you know, you got on there, like, all right, like, we need you to be the, you know what I'm saying, the, 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 the sexy time man. Like, was that something that mm-hmm. just happened or was that always natural inside of you? Yeah, I was in a dance group since the third grade. And our <laughs> name of the dance group was named Forever Nasty. So, like, we, we was baby Forever Nasty. Forever, and then wait, the, wait, wait, in third grade? Yeah, yeah. We talking, always... Wow. We always had, and I don't know what we was thinking back then, but yeah, the main group was named Forever Nasty, and and, and our group name was Baby Forever Nasty. And wow. then, you know, I was always dancing on stage called the National Guard in Miami, and we used to dance the Arabian Nights Festival, um, Martin Luther King Parade. Like, we used to dance on all stages. So that was always my passion since day one. I didn't start rapping until I got in middle school. My father made me get in a group with my brothers and and not only, like, Damn, I'm thinking about it now. Like, yeah, I was always on stage. Before I was rapping, I was on stage. Wow, I never even thought about this. But yeah, so I was always an entertainer, bro. I was always an entertainer. Wow. And I was always the one getting snatched off stage and dancing, you know, and fan favorite and things like that. So that is, it, is, it always been my swag. But just to answer the sexual question, like, all we can do is have sex back then. Like, my father ain't let us go nowhere. We was on strict punishment, like, or we was just on on a strict lockdown that he didn't want us to go outside and get in no trouble. So all he let us do is bring girls back home. <laughs> he was like, all right, wow. you can't do nothing else, but you can go ahead and you can bring girls in, bring the party to you. So we was always having a great old time. So when we start talking, when we start creating music, we start talking about what we knew about, you know, and that's where the sex music came from. We created Grano Me. That was our first sex record ever. And then mm-hmm. from that point forward, we was like, yo, this is it. And we just always talked about what we knew. Wow. That ain't, you know what? That makes sense. I always wonder, like, okay, why they talk about sex so much? But that makes sense. Like, you put your, your life in your music. That makes, exactly. that makes sense. That makes sense. Like, what, what are the crazy things, not crazy things, but different things did you experience growing up that you think, like, the typical, you know, teenager or young adult didn't experience because you were in that boy group or things that you wanted to experience, like, um... Like going to like undergrad and all of that kind of stuff. You feel like yeah, I didn't go to none of that. I didn't go to I didn't go to prom. The only thing wow. I did go to was undergrad. I didn't go wow. to prom. I didn't go to graduation. I didn't go, and it wasn't even because I was famous. It's because my dad didn't respect it like that. Like he didn't care. Mm-hmm. And now I understand why because now this same thing I'm preaching. But if my son do go to school, I would want him to go to his graduation and prom. Uh, but my dad just like. Even from day one, he was like, you ain't working for nobody. He never would let me get a job, even if I wanted to get a job. And the first day I was going to a job, I will never forget. It was summertime. My dad got out of prison and I, I was going to Honey Bake Ham because my mom worked at Honey Bake Ham. She was the manager. And it's going to be my first job ever. I had the tight pants on, my ankles showing. I ain't give a damn. I was going to work. I was going to make some money. I had my candy mm-hmm. business, but this was going to be extra for me. And, uh, and he told me like, nah. My son ain't working for nobody. So to this day, wow. I never had a real job before. I never had a job. And um, I don't even know what it feels like. So even with my business, there's certain things that my fiance has to tell me like, well, you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't, what, at the beginning. Now I know. But when I first started, like, I didn't know what it felt like to put too much pressure on an employee. I didn't know if I was coming down too hard. I didn't know if I was coming down too light on them. Like, I didn't know a mm. lot of this stuff. I had to learn based on experience. And I think it was great because it didn't put me in a box on how things should be. 
and I mm. created my own rules as a business owner. So I don't go based off of what the typical person would do. I run my operation how I want to run it, how I feel mm. like it should get ran, my own mm -hmm. systems, my own accountability, my own everything. So I feel like it was a blessing in disguise. Yeah, I mean, everything happens for a reason, man. I think, you know, the, the hard grind that you have today and, you know, same the work that you're doing came a lot from that, from that experience, you know, being that entrepreneur and getting out and getting it, you know, on your own pretty much. Um, so you were, you were 27, 28 when you got kicked out your dad's house. Um, I know that, yeah. that was quite an experience for you. And you had no money from Pretty Ricky. Like you were 27, you, you were in Pretty Ricky since, since how old? You said like ninth middle grade, school. middle school. Mi middle, it was middle school. school, yeah. Yeah, and you literally had no money from it. Like how did somebody, it was just amazing to hear that, that somebody really bounced back from that like what what made you you know get into that and be like you know what i'm gonna fight back regardless like what, what kind of stuff was going through your mind if you remember of how you came through that situation because a lot of people would have stayed down like a lot of artists you see that you know didn't make it past a certain point like who knows what they're doing now you know a lot of them hit that bankruptcy phase and they faded out but you still you know what i'm saying were able to, to prosper and what you were doing, which is remarkable. So, like, what did you do to be able to get yourself that propelled up? I never let any situation I ever went through mm -hmm. affect me, no mm -hmm. matter what it is. I never let anything get to me. I always use everything as motivation to me. Mm -hmm. So my dad kicking me out was just like, all right, cool. What's next? Mm. Like, it was never like, oh, my God, I got kicked out. I ain't got no money. It was like, all right, what's next? Mm -hmm. I ain't got that no more. What can I do now? I got a, one call. I got an opportunity to make some money in a certain way. And for me, I like to be top. I, I, I want to be number one. If anything, mm -hmm. top three. Like, uh, no matter what I do, whatever field I get into, I want to be top three, if not mm -hmm. number one. And this company called My Likes at the time, you can make money off of, off of tweeting. So I'm like, okay, well, I mean, I was being, log I'm a logical person. So I was like, well, if I have a bunch of followers, the more followers I have, the more money I can make. So mm. how can I make as much money as possible and build as many followers as possible to make as money, much money as possible? So I started thinking of creative ways I could start growing massive followings. So I created a proven formula that worked on any platform and mm. I started duplicating that throughout these different parody accounts, fan accounts, role playing accounts, whatever you want to call it. And then I slowly started rising, you know, up the charts because they had a chart, a leaderboard and you can see what everybody was making. By the wow. time I got to the second, third month, I was making like $5,000, $3,000 a day. Wow. Yeah, I was I was killing wow. it, and 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 I still got those screenshots to this day. I got screenshots in, in every single, and they had incentives too. Every time you made, every time you made number one, you got one hundred and fifty dollars. When you made number two, you got fifty dollars. So I got nothing but one fifty, one fifty, one fifty, one fifty. Like based off of the one fifties, I was making like a, a thousands of extra dollars every single month just based off of that alone. Wow! So it wow. was it, it was incentive based, and also it was just you know me just being an overachiever i'm mm. just an overachiever bro like i i don't i don't like to be last and i know for sure you get out what you put in if you don't put mm. nothing in you get nothing out so me i was on the computer 20 hours a day like it was so addicting Jeez. because once i figured out the formula every time imagine every time you post a tweet you wake up 200 dollars. you post a tweet a few hours later you make $50 and I'll be re every time I refresh, I make a hundred dollars, $50, five dollars, $10, $30. And every time I post that money, just go up. So it got addicting. So that's why I ended up number one. And I kind of have that type of personality in terms of everything I do, because I just don't want to be last, man. I, I really want to get, and even me giving back, like if I get back, I'm, I'm trying to go crazy. I'm not just trying mm -hmm. to like, I'm not just, Oh, he gave five grand or, or, or he gave a thousand dollars or, no, if I'm, this is what I'm doing, then this is mm -hmm. what I'm doing. And then we going to go full throttle with it. No, nah, that makes sense. That makes sense. I think, I think a lot of people were like, I didn't even, I, I knew you were making money from, but I didn't know it was like that, like <laughs> 3,000, 5,000 a day, like from going from nothing 
you know what I'm saying, to something like that every day. That's 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 remarkable, bro. Like that Thank is remarkable. You. So what what is Pretty Ricky gonna do their own tour? Like I'm I'm honestly ready for a Pretty Ricky tour. I'm ready for y'all own, you know, thing to come back because honestly, like y'all y'all music is, is, is classic at this point. It's all classic. So are y'all planning like another tour coming up or like anything big like that besides the singles? Yeah, I just gotta get with my brothers and see what the game plan is. We were supposed to get on a call this week, but we just didn't end up on a call. But mm -hmm. for me, we just gotta figure out what makes the most sense. Mm -hmm. And uh, and honestly, for like any tour, like I'm, like we gotta come in like as the person who's doing the tour and really have some ownership in what we're doing because mm -hmm. it's easy just to hop on a tour and get paid, but the yes. money is in the ownership part. You know, and it comes with the ups and downs, like the whole millennial tour got put on pause because of coronavirus. So that right. just shows you no matter what business you do, is no guarantee. So you got to figure out how to protect the bottom line. But to right. answer your story, I mean, to answer your your, your, um, your question, question, long story short, is, um, yeah, we're going to situate everything with Pretty Ricky, figure out what the game plan is. We're definitely coming out with another single in the next mm -hmm. uh, month or two. And uh, we are planning more tours, and we're just figuring out how we're going to do it. Word, word. Definitely, man. Well, listen, thank you so much for your time today, bro. Like, you honestly inspired me. So I actually wrote down some quotes from the stuff that you were saying. Um, you were saying the more people you can make rich, the more you can get rich. Um, you had people that pay, pay attention. Like, all this stuff was in your, your interviews. And I was like, sheesh, this dude is dope. I got to find a way to interview him. And just get some gems and some jewels and you drop some things that i'm never gonna forget um, i'm definitely gonna re rewind this and edit it up and make sure i post it on youtube so everybody can get a piece of this gem from everywhere um but please plug in your your program um, i'm actually am checking it out after this interview so your program the school that you have um and all of the ways people can get it and all that stuff and we'll we'll go ahead and, and end it like that yeah, man. So if anybody want to join my academy, it's called Spectacular Academy. It's the evolution of self-education. All you got to do is go to SpectacularAcademy.com. Uh, if you want to go there or if you want to just sign up for one of my trainings, it's a free training. You can text 786-661-1224 and text the hashtag masterclass. And, wow. and I'll personally send you the link. That's my personal number. Hit me up, and uh, I am spectacular on all social media platforms. So you want to holler at me, holler at me. It's all love. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much, man. We're the lunch table. I'm sure we're going to run into each other again soon at some point in time. Um, but, yeah, bro, thank you, man. Like, this this was huge for me. Like, this was big for our platform. And, I again, just appreciate the, the time that you took out, you know, uh, to be able to do this for us. So thank you so much. All love, brother. Keep killing it, bro. Appreciate it, bro. Peace.